You got the video done? I'm doing a backup copy before I export it. This computer has quit on me. It's either five or six times. It's just folded up shop. It's frozen up. The thing is overheating. Mm. Yeah, so. Well, eventually, she bit the dust. Set us back a few days and a few thousand bucks too, but that's the reason we're not doing what we had planned for today in terms of a video. But we wanna give you a real-time update because things are in motion. <laughs> we wish we could tell you exactly what kind of boat we're getting, but we thought we could give you a little tip. Yes, so uh, what'd you call it? A an, hint. An Easter egg, if you will. The boat that we've got a handshake deal on one multi-hole of the year. So that narrows down the field a bit, do some Googling. We are gonna share a few more details with the patrons. So if you wanna join up over there, we'll give you a couple closer peeks at our potential new ride. Things are in flux though. The boat is actually in Airlie Beach, which is in the northeastern part of Queensland, and we need to bring it down. The owner needs to bring it down to the Gold Coast. This time of year, that can be a difficult task. Yeah, Nick was set to fly out tomorrow and he was gonna help the owner bring it down to Boatworks, but the weather was uh, not cooperating. Yeah, this time of year, the winds typically shift to the southeast and it just so happens for the next week or so, it's gonna be blown at 20 to 25 knots in a light performance catamaran. You don't wanna have to be sitting on those engines for three or four or five days. So. The owner very wisely said, you know what? Let's just delay things a bit. So where in the heck are we? Yeah, where are we? It's hard to keep track. Last we saw you, we we're up there in Airlie Beach flying down to... We fall into the arms of, where are we? Melbourne. And yeah. we had a lot of viewers down here saying, when are you coming to Melbourne? Yeah. And I'm glad we made it down here. What it's like to just get off an airplane and take a cab and dinner is served and please come in have some coffee Good you guys thank this you is amazing. So much. great to have you guys steph and burham thank you so much for hosting us at your beautiful house not just hosting us but cooking some incredible food homemade cheesecake anyone Käsekuchen. yeah so Käses cheese kuchen is cake and you put butter and zucker and vanilla zucker i yeah, from grandmother's recipe, just incredible. <laughs> it's quite the, I guess, stark contrast because Melbourne is way bigger than we thought. This is a major metropolis. All right, we are walking from CBD across this little bridge to Richmond, and we're gonna have dinner with some of our first patrons, Holly and Stefan. It's gonna be so fun. We're gonna talk Outremer. They're getting the Outremer 52. Holly and Stefan from Sailing Alwyn happen to be in Melvin. They've got a cool podcast and it details their new build, an Uchimere 52. Check it out. How'd you get this place? Huh? How'd you get this place? Somebody just Instagrammed us up and said, hey, want to stay at our pad down in Melbourne? Thanks, Tom. This is an amazing place. Gorgeous views, nice big kitchen, and we got a king-size bed. Melbourne, this is a major metropolis that seems to go on and on and on, but surrounded by some really untouched beauty, and we've been able to sample both. I guess I'm just getting to the point where I like the, the elbow room of a little bit more open air. You definitely get that when you go down the Morningside Peninsula. People up here? Wow. Thank you, Helena and Jason, for showing us the Morningside Peninsula and all your special favorite spots. And a huge thank you for hosting 
our little Patreon get together. Great to meet so many of you out here. Next to the car. <laughs> you. And I didn't know this before we made the trip, but I've actually got relatives here. My is, is my second cousin, Heidi, and her husband, Scott, live on a beautiful spread up near Healesville, and it was wonderful. We didn't capture the kangaroo and his joey right outside the door, but these beautiful birds hanging out right on their doorstep. Loved meeting you, Heidi and Scotty. What did you see? The fern leaves, like as I was looking at them, started just like lifting up like this. And not just a little bit, like four or five feet. <laughs> I'm just staring at it happen. And I went over to that one and it did it too. You need to Google that. This is pretty impressive. It's really pretty. Wow. That's some untouched land. And just down the road, there's the Healesville Sanctuary. I don't particularly care for zoos, but this really felt different. They really do a wonderful job making you feel like you're in the natural habitat of the koalas, the wallabies, the kangaroo. I think it's a little early at the zoo and all the animals are still asleep. It's meditating. They're just sitting back on their tails. <laughs> yeah, I saw him scratching his ear. So the tail is kind of like a foot. Like... We're gonna see the common wombat, not the special wombat, the common wombat. These guys are the bulldozers of the forest. They, they're little balls of muscle that can clear incredible patches of earth and. They look like big rats. <laughs> no, they don't. They're, they're really, really cute, but they're a little shy. And evidently, he's got another little apartment that's got heating. And so this apartment with the glass facade and the people walking past, he, he's not so excited about coming to this one on display. He wants to be all curled up with this heater. I don't blame him at all. I mean, it would actually be kind of odd to be like sleeping in front of people peering down at you, so, I don't know. What's really interesting is on a typical day, you would have about a thousand people walking around, but today there's only about 50. So we picked a good time of year before school gets out. We feel like we have the entire place to ourselves. It's very peaceful. And now we're gonna go see a close-up encounter with the koalas. They only allow six people for the close-up encounter. And who knows, maybe we'll be the only people. It's been on my bucket list. I wanted to meet a koala. I don't wanna say that they're unfriendly, they're just a little sleepy. In fact, how long do they sleep every day? Like 18 to 20 hours, kind of like a cat. I wish I could sleep that long. <laughs> Five or six hours, that's about all I can get. Where to from here, my love? We're headed to Sydney tomorrow. Not for the Sydney to Hobart race. First of all, I believe they don't allow multi-holes. <laughs> but also, that looks like way too hard a race. Insane. They leave on Boxing Day, regardless of the weather. And the weather down here, I guess you could say, or the locals have said, quite unseasonable. We should be heading into summer, and uh, well, I made a huge mistake. We made a huge mistake ditching all of our cold weather clothes in New Zealand about a month ago. I've got one pair of pants. I'm freezing. <laughs> Me too. It's time to head north. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Normally in the northern hemisphere, north means, well, colder, <laughs> but around here, north means warmer. I'm still getting used to how everything's kind of upside down down here. It is funny though, it's December and it's cold, and that kind of works in my brain because that's what we're used to. Yeah. Right? <laughs> In case you're turning off the YouTubes for the rest of the year, how- Who's gonna do that? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, we know some of you would rather hang out with Grandma and Uncle Pete than watch the YouTubes. But if that's you, we wanna say, happy holidays. Now that we have our new laptop that cost as much as a pretty decent car, we should be back to our regularly scheduled program next week. Megan doesn't like the broadcasting voice. <laughs> See you guys next week. Thanks for spending your time with us and special thanks to the patrons. We couldn't do this without you. Yeah. Take care, everybody. See you next week.